There it is. Well, hello everybody. My name is Alan Pennington. I'm a waste reduction coordinator with Marion County Environmental Services. And I am here today to talk with you about recycling in Marion County, Oregon, just so you know where you are. Um, before we get started going down that path, talking about recycling, I want to, let's see here, there we go. I want to go over very quickly, because we're gonna cover a lot of material here. There's gonna be a, a lot of, this is, this is where you are gonna be thinking um, about a lot of things. And so you can kind of play, what do you know? You can play, play your own version of, of card, uh, card Talk, Stump the Chump, to see what you remember. And so just remember here, just here a little quick question, what happens to our garbage? This is a, a scenario that everybody here in Marion County, well, I should say, about 90% of our, our population in Marion County have something like this at their residence, if they live in a home. Uh, uh, this, if you were, if you were live in an apartment building or a condo, it might not look like this, but uh, it, typically this is what you'd have these four bins. So what happens to our garbage? Think about where it goes. Poof, time's up. It's gonna go to two places. It's either gonna go to Covanta, where it's gonna be burned for being electricity, or it's gonna to go to the Coffin Butte landfill. About 55% goes to Covanta, and the other part goes to Coffin Butte. The green bin over there is what we call our organics, our yard debris cart. So where does that go? When we take all that, we put our food scraps or our yard debris, our leaves and whatnot coming from our yard, where does it go? Quickly, it goes to the Pacific Region Compost, which is down just a little bit north of Corvallis. And so that's where they turn that stuff into compost in just about, I'm guessing about 60 to 65 days. And they do it, that's pretty quick. What happens to our mixed recycling when it goes into the mixed recycling cart? Quick, where does it go? Mm, ding, 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 time's up. It goes to one of two places. It's either gonna to go to Garden Services here in Marion County, or it's gonna to go to Pioneer Recycling Services just outside the county up north. And looking at this crazy, this is a, what they call material recovery facility. This looks like something from a Monty Python movie. If you remember the old movie, Brazil, if you've never seen Brazil, I recommend it, but um, it's a crazy machine. We don't have anything like this that we're sending stuff to. This is what Garden looks like. It's still a big machine. It's a big sorting machine, um, but it's, it's not quite like that other one. But again, this is where all those materials go from a mixed bin where it has to get separated into its various strings, like the different papers, the different plastics, and so on. And there is a, a video that's pretty cool. Uh, we don't have time to look at it, but when you go, if you go back and look at this online, you'll be able to click that link and you can get to that video. It's pretty neat. So now it's time to think about recycling. So this is a game we play sometimes at our events where we play, are you smarter than Mr. Know-it-all? Here we go. Let's start with paper. So we're gonna, I'm gonna give you some, what we call the, the softballs right down over the middle of the plate here. Newspaper and inserts, where do they go? We've got four bins over there that you can put it in, the mixed organics, garbage, mixed recycling, or the special recycling, the little bin. It uh, could be green, it could be blue, it could be red, it doesn't really matter. These colors of bins may change because some of the garbage haulers have different colored bins. So where does it go? Let's see if you're right. Yep, mixed recycling. How about corrugated cardboard? Corrugated cardboard is the one that has those little wavy lines down there. And if you can see my arrow over here, you can see the little wavy lines right there. Okay, so where does it go? Yep, it goes in the mixed recycling. Just flatten it out if you can, because otherwise it's gonna fill up a lot of space. And uh, if you can remove tape and labels, that's great. But if you can't, it's uh, not the end of the world. But it does need to be clean. What about envelopes with the little plastic windows? Doo, 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 doo. Did you guess that one? Good deal. So it, you can still throw those envelopes with those little mixed little windows in, but ideally you would take them off if you could, but that's up to you. Magazines. What do you think? Let's see, let's see, are you right? Mixed recycling, absolutely. Okay, books. There's hardcover books and softcover books, two different kinds. And you gotta love these titles, you guys. These are good ones. 
So what do you think? This one's a trick question. Have you figured out what the trick is? All right, here we go. Soft cover books can go right into the um, uh, mix recycling and they want you to, to ideally to pull off that cover and just uh, add that to the, add it separately because it's kind of a different material. And then for hardcover books, they can't go into the mixed recycling, but you could take them to garden services, just contact them and they will, they will accept it. That's one of those you're gonna have to take directly to them. And if you've only got one book to recycle, don't do that. It's not worth the environmental impact, so you have to drive over there. If you can walk over there, then that's a great thing. Shredded paper, where does it go? Well, this is one of those ones that we've changed over the years, so let's see if you get it right. Okay. If you've got a small amount of it, you can put it in your mixed organics. You can put it just a little bit in a five gallon bucket, which isn't much. That's a 95 gallon container over there in your mixed organics. Um, Garden Services will take it, they'll recycle it. You'll they'll take it for free if it's already shredded, uh, a small amount. And um, if you've got a, uh, if, they, if they need to shred it for you, they will charge you, but you can give them a call and find out more details. Okay, so if you've got, if, you, if you're gonna shred it and you can't, um, you can't put it in your mixed organics then it's just gonna go into the garbage. Photographs, remember those things? Remember back when we used to develop film? Where does it go? Think about the chemistry of the paper and it's garbage. Can you imagine throwing away those photographs? Okay, Horizon Organic, well it's an organic milk, it must be an organic container. Can we recycle it? No, read the fine print. It's got a plastic coating chemical additive called wet strength to keep it together. And so it does a great job of protecting that container and keeping it strong so it doesn't just start leaking on you, but it's not good for the paper mill. So on the West Coast, we can't recycle that. Now, there are, again, this is Marion County. There are some places that have programs like in Portland where you can put these things into their mixed recycling because they collect a bunch of them and ship them across the country because they collect them in vast numbers. But we don't do that here because we don't, the, the MRFs that we could, that we're, they go through and then the ones that are sorting through all our recycling, those particular MRFs don't handle that material. Uh, so we don't send it that way. Um, again, this is odd, but uh, we'll find out that maybe plastic's a better choice in this case. It's up to you. Okay, what about this container? It is a frozen food container. Does that tip you off? Where does it go? Yep, you're right. All frozen food boxes go into the garbage. In fact, if you'll read that, that last little bit, if it's supposed to go into your, if it's gonna go in the refrigerator, it's pretty much gonna be garbage. It look, may look like paper, but it's gonna be garbage. Um, food trays, whether it's got plastic or paper on it, where are we gonna put it? Absolutely. Um, it doesn't matter what it looks like. Sometimes people go, well, it's paper. Well, it's paper, but it's going to have that plastic laminate in there. And even if you can't see it, it's going to be garbage. Tillamook ice cream. Oh man, doesn't that look good? I'll have some for lunch today. It'll be my lunch today. But however, where am I going to put it? Of course, we just answered it before, right? It's frozen food, so it's going to go into garbage. What about this guy? That is a cup because somebody went and bought coffee and they didn't have their own cup or because Starbucks says, we can't deal with that or whatever. So what about it? Yep, trick question. The cup and lid are garbage. The little sleeve could be recycled. What about that? Well, everything about that picture to me screams garbage. Yeah, yeah. Okay, that is copy paper, computer paper. That's an easy one, right? Of course it is. All right, paper ream cover. What about that? What do you think? Yep. It's got that, it's remember, it's kind of a waterproof to keep moisture out of that paper. So yeah. All right, look at this one. Mm. 
This is tricky. What are we going to do about this stuff? What do you think? Okay, pure red over there, box wine. How can we make all that recycle? We've got that plastic container. Figured it out? Okay, so the little bag that's in it would be garbage because that container cannot be recycled. It's got all different kinds of plastics on it and uh, it'd be hard to clean. The seventh generation container could go in the mix recycling, but there's some caveats there. We'll come back to that one. But what about that uh, box? Could it be recycled? Yeah, it could be recycled by itself. The seventh generation would, of course, need to have something removed. Yep, the lid. Okay, receipts. You always get a receipt. They would love to give you a receipt. So what do you do with it? Can that be recycled? Well, let's think about that receipt. It's going to be garbage. Why do you think that is? Well, that receipt's got some uh, chemicals in it, the bisphenol, uh, a and B, and both of those have endocrine disruptors. And even though the one that got the, the B version of that uh, bisphenol, uh, B is the one that's, that's got, uh, it's well known because it's, you know, they wanted uh, people to green up and get rid of those, that particular chemical. They switched over to the version of A because it's a, it's a special process to make these things print up. Uh, it's still got a, it's a toxic chemical that we don't necessarily want into our recycled paper. So what about these cute little animal bags of food? What do you think? Did you guess this? Yep, you did. That's why you got that one right. How are we doing so far? Are we doing really well? Here's another easy one. This is going to help improve your batting average. Okay, so we want everybody batting a thousand a day. Yeah, that's easy. One. Okay, what about these guys? These are what we call aseptic containers, okay? Can they go into the recycling? Anywhere, anywhere, anyone? Yeah, garbage. Again, it's that same issue as the milk carton. It's got that embedded plastic liner. There's a great reason to have these things, especially if you're taking these places where that you want it to be fresh for, for many, many months, possibly years at a time, but uh, it's, you can't recycle containers. Um, egg cartons. What are we going to do with egg cartons when we're done with them? That's a tough one. We people and people had a, when we changed the rules on egg cartons, people got pretty upset. Um, but there's a lot of contamination with egg cartons. People, you know, egg break in there. Um, and then there's they, a lot of times there's stickers or whatnot. So they don't want them in the mix with organics. Um, the best thing to do is if you're lucky enough to find a, somebody with, with chickens that would want those containers. Uh, but, uh, you know, you, you also got to celebrate the fact that that egg carton is made out of mixed, it's going to be made out of recycled content paper because this is old paper. So it's basically been around a while. So it's, it's a success story for recycling. Just celebrate it. Okay, what about uh, these envelopes? Okay. Now you'll notice, given there's a little giveaway there and you probably got this one right, that's gonna be garbage. You can't reuse them. You see, it's got the little, the little bubbles in there to protect what's in there. So that will not go into the recycle bin. What about a cereal box? Yeah, that's an easy one, right? What about these guys? Toilet tissue roll. Yep, you got that one right too. Okay, what about these guys? So there's always an exception to the rules. And this is one of those exceptions. These things will go into a refrigerator. And my rule of thumb is if it goes into a refrigerator, it's garbage. And for some reason, these guys will accept these things. So they can go into the mix recycling when they're empty. Just don't put the models in there, those that are full, right? What about pizza boxes? Okay. So this is a trick question. Think about it for just a little bit. All right. What can we do with that pizza? Well, if you have mixed organic recycling in your community, you can put it up there. And you can take that greasy piece of that pizza box and you can throw it also into your organics box. But if you've got a, if the top piece is not greasy, 
you can actually break that off and put it into your mixed recycling. But you really want it to be clean if it's going to go in there. So if it's got grease on it, go ahead and put it up into your mixed recycling bin, okay? What about these little boats that had, I don't know, let's say French fries in there. Can we recycle those? And, nope. Again, those things are gonna be, most of the time are gonna be unrecyclable and not compostable, forget about thin layer plastic. Post-it notes. Where are they gonna go? Yep, you got that one right. Okay, paper towels and napkins, okay? Now, this is a little tricky because a lot of people go, well, that's paper. Yes, it is. But if it came off out of your kitchen and maybe it's kitchen waste on there, then you can throw it in with your mixed organics. If it's coming out of your bathroom, don't put that in there. Okay, that's gonna be garbage. So we don't want hand towels or tissue paper uh, coming into our mixed organics, all right? It's a sanitation thing. Because remember, even at the compost facilities, they are looking at, you know, there's still uh, humans involved with uh, that stuff when it gets dumped off there. So we wanna keep everybody safe. Wax cardboard. Um, that is a cardboard container. It's corrugated cardboard, which we can recycle, but, Where's it going to go? That's a trick question because that waxing, uh, they used to actually use wax, and now they use a polyethylene uh, liner in there. And it keeps it, when you think about those banana boxes and apples and whatnot, those things typically have uh, that liner, so that's going to be garbage. This is a pretty easy one. Where is this stuff going to go? Yeah, you got that one. Yeah, even when it's got... Uh, you know, these paper plates over there, laminated. Anything that's laminated is going to be bad. It's going to be garbage. Okay, let's go look just plastic. Okay, milk jugs. You should know this one. Okay. Blah, 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 blah. Yep, jugs. Rule of thumb, bottles and jugs can go into the mixed recycling. Okay. Want to take the caps off and want to just give it a quick rinse uh, before you throw it in there. It needs to be dry. Now don't, you know, don't sit there thinking, I got to fill this up with boiling hot water that's a gallon. That would be, that's a environmental no-no because it's just way too much uh, energy wasted for that one container. But just give it a quick rinse, get the, get the, the goo off, the, you know, out of it quickly. But uh, it doesn't have to be, you know, perfect. Just needs to be cleanish. Okay, what about these, say, yogurt cups, you know, these uh, number fives. Uh, that you see out there. What about these guys? Can they go on the mixed recycling? Well, they can in some areas, but not in Marion County. So those are garbage. And this one has also given folks a lot of heartburn because they, especially folks that buy a lot of these little uh, yogurt containers. So just remember, it's garbage in Marion County. Clamshells, you know this one. Yep. That's a clamshell-ish thing, right? Container. Yep, you knew that one too. Okay, what about this one? Plastic cups. Maybe the clear one could. Maybe the colored one could. Well, no, remember when it comes to plastic, it's only bottles and jugs. Is that a bottle? Is that a jug? That's a jar, okay? What separates a jar from a bottle, okay? A jar has a neck that's approximately the same size as the rest of the container. A bottle has a no narrower neck and opening. What about plastic bags? Plastic bags, can we go to mixed recycling? If you're a master recycler, you absolutely should know this. Hopefully the other folks did too. So what do you think? Yeah, they're gonna be garbage. Now you can reuse these things, obviously. You can wash them out and reuse them. And a lot of uh, grocery stores have places where you can bring in your plastic bags for recycling. And they'll accept them. They need to be clean and dry, though. Okay. And then there's also this uh, website called plasticfilmrecycling.org, and they will help you with that. Um, plastic bottle wrap or product wrap. 
Um, think about all these different kind of plastics that are stretchy, that can be pulled over uh, an item like paper towels. It's pretty similar to what those plastic bags are, but they still cannot go into mixed recycling. Why is that? Because any of that mixed recycling, those bags, whatever kind of bag it is, it can be recycled if you take it to a grocery store. It can be recycled there, but you can't put it in the mixed recycling because those material recovery facilities, remember that crazy picture that looks like from the uh, crazy machine from the movie Brazil that we saw at the very beginning? Those machines get all tangled up. They have all sorts of equipment that will get tangled up by those plastic film bags. So please don't put them, ever put them in the mixed recycling. Okay, bottles. It's kind of a trick question. Because if you look at the little Kirkland drinking water, it's a pretty small one. So bottles larger than 12 ounces can go in mixed recycling. If they're smaller than that, it's going to be garbage. However, if you hang on to that label, that label has the code on it, which was because at some point somebody paid a dime in the state of Oregon to buy that container. And that dime could be redeemed for that another 10 cents anywhere at one of the bottle drop locations. So you can turn that in, but if you pull that little um, cover off of it, that little label off of it, which is usually a little plastic wrap, you no longer, it will no longer identify it and you will not get your dime back. These are pouches. Where do pouches go? Imagine that thing's empty and it's super clean. Where can it go? It's a plastic pouch. Is it a bottle? Is it a jug? Nope. And yeah, it's, that's just information. Bottles and jugs, you already know. We just talked about it. Yep, we got that one right. Rinse them out, caps are garbage. What about this guy? The bottle, is it a jug? Caps garbage, the container is a bottle. Okay. What about these guys? Too easy? Yeah. Styrofoam. Again, if you're a master recycler, you probably know this answer. And I'll bet most of the crowd out there does too. Block styrofoam. It's garbage, but you can take it to the Fresh Start Market on Center Street, 3020 Center Street, uh, and they will accept it for recycling. Just do not put it in the mixed recycling bin. You can tell it's uh, um, styrofoam if you can, you know, if it snaps when you bend it, gives that uh, satisfying snap, and then you realize all those little shards of that, those little pellets going flying everywhere. That's why people hate it. These are these meat trays that are made out of some sort of foam. You know that one. That's going to be garbage. That cannot be recycled in hardly any place in Oregon. There is one, but we're not going to talk about that right now. Plastic or cloth mesh bags. What do you think? Nah, you know that one. What about that? Garbage in, garbage out, right? Okay, dirty diapers. Well, I don't know. Yeah, you know that one. Empty prescription bottles. Okay, empty prescription bottles. So what do you think? It's a bottle. Yeah, we call them bottles. That's a tricky one though. Uh, prescription bottles, really, it's, it doesn't really have a neck. It's a, it's a weird kind of, it's a, it's a weird one. So it's really, it's really garbage. Um, but you definitely want to make sure that there doesn't have the label on it, that you can destroy that if you can. Um, but uh, these bottles truly are bottles, as you can see the difference, see the neck, which the old uh, prescription bottles don't have. So if you, even though we call them a bottle, there's always exceptions to every rule, aren't they? That's what it means to be an adult, that you can accept that fact. Okay, so I'm smiling now big. Okay, 12 ounces or larger, yes. You can take that and mix recycling. What about caps? If you saved them all individually, if you just got them as a group, can you put them in mixed recycling? No, you can't, they're garbage, okay? So caps are always gonna be garbage if they're just individually in Marin County. Bottle, jug, garbage? No, that's a shampoo bottle and it fits our definition, even with that weird top that that, uh, that uh, fake uh, Hidden Shoulders bottle has. So caps are garbage. Clean and dry, rinse them out. Peanuts, styrofoam peanuts, foam peanuts. What can we do with those things? 
garbage recycling. Well, you should know this one. You can't take it to the uh, Fresh Start Market because it's not block, but there's a lot of places that like to, that will click, the, to, excuse me, accept these. Just stumbling over the words here. We'll accept these. And uh, if you go to mcrecycleguide.net, uh, and that will be posted at the end of this uh, webinar, that address, you can find some places that will accept them. But uh, just about any place that is uh, um, that does shipping, like a, uh, like a FedEx type store, um, state of uh, Oregon, if they're um, uh, drawing a blank on it, but the place where they send out stuff, um, drawing a blank. There are, again, go to our website and it'll help you with that. Plastic cutlery, that's a no brainer, right? Okay, I want to go back. Remember, it talks about uh, um, it's polystyrene, but it doesn't matter what the number is. And down at the very bottom there, it says the only place Oregon accepts them is Agilix and Tiger. Agilix will also take those foam trays that you have up there. But again, don't collect a car full and then drive all the way up there just to drop those off. If you're going to go by there, it's close to the freeway. If you're going to Portland, you can swing by there, but don't make a special trip. It's It, it just doesn't pay off and, and, and CO2 production. Okay, jug, or excuse me, buckets. Is it a bottle? Is it a jug? Okay, plastic pails are pretty valuable, actually. A lot of people love to have these things. And if, you know, if it's not just completely trash, if you put it out on your street, someone will take it. I have found people snatch these things up as fast as you can, if you make them available. Okay, what about these guys? Is it a bottle? Is it a jug? It's made out of plastic. It's going to be garbage. There are a couple of nurseries in uh, that I know over in the Salem area, and I'm, there's, but you know, of course, there's nurseries all over or all over the county and all over Oregon that might accept these uh, for you know for repotting purposes. Uh, the um, the nurseries, the, the big nurseries, don't want these things back because they can potentially carry. Uh, pathogens for them and they just can't risk it. So they always use new pots. Toys, you know, there wasn't, it's, it's going to be garbage. Okay. But thrift shops love these things if they're clean and not all gooey and stuff. Let's go to glass. Okay. This is glass from, looks like food stuff, wine, stuff that people have consumed from. They go in that special recycling. In the old days, we used to sort them by color. We don't have to do that anymore. Just take off caps and corks if you've got them. Uh, this kind of glass. Can that glass get, go into the special recycling bin? Nope, it's going to be garbage. Glass, all the different kinds of glass melt at different temperatures. And so the only glass that they can really recycle um, in, a, in a mass way is the ones we just described up here. Okay, the ones that, you know, think about it, is it something that you consumed out of that kind of glass can go? This kind of glass is not. Metal. What about these metals? What would you do with those? Well, they go to the mixed recycling. Okay, if it's a can, if it's a metal can, you can put it in there. Now, the lid, if the lid is still attached to the container, it can go in there. Now you'll notice that one steel can right there at the top right where the lid is separated from it. Don't put that lid in there by it, just loose by itself because it creates a problem and will uh, become a contaminant for the material recovery facility. So there are ways to deal with that. So if you can, you can, we'll get to it here in just a second. I'm jumping ahead. Uh, aluminum bowl, excuse me, Oil. Um, I think that's how you pronounce it here. Um, what, is, what do we do with it? It's going to be garbage because if you throw those little bits into the mixed recycling bin, it's going to be confetti. Uh, so it, it can't go into the mixed recycling bin like that. You could put it into a can, whatever kind of can that can be recycled and stuck it in there. And then if you crump that can shut, then it could go into the mixed recycling just so that it doesn't fall out. Here's a, also a picture of, of cans that could be recycled. 
um, because we already said they could. And you can throw in other little metals as long as you crimp it shut so that stuff doesn't fall out. Again, if, it does, if it's not gonna stay in there, if you're gonna throw in a bunch of little bottle caps in there, don't do it, just put them in the garbage. Just remember, more likely your residential waste is gonna to go to Covanta. They have a big powerful magnet that will pull that stuff out of the garbage as well. So there's a good chance it will be caught there. This kind of metal, what about that stuff? Can you put it in mixed recycling? Nope, because you can only put in cans, metal cans. Um, and looking at these, these items here, if you still wanted to, to if, again, Covanta will be able to pull those out with their magnet. Uh, you could also give them to some place where they do collect uh, metal. And if you go to that MC Recycle Guide, um, you will find a lot of places that will accept those. I save them up and take them a lot of times over to the Habitat Restore. What about spray cans? What can we do? We used to put those in the mixed recycling, but down there, garbage. Batteries. Bag of batteries. Merry Christmas, someone. What are we going to do with that? You got it. Special recycling. You're going to pick that stuff up, but it's got to be in a bag separated like that in that special bin. By the way, that's any kind of battery, any kind of battery, not car batteries. Might be too big, but uh, you know, if you're pulling one out of your computer or you're pulling one out of your um, whatever, uh, sometimes you get to reach chargeable batteries. Uh, so there's a lot, of, a lot of things to think about when you put a battery in there. Organics. Organics is anything that's going to go into that yard cart or mixed organics cart. And so there's a picture of stuff coming out of the yard. It looks like a bird nest, right? So where's it going to go? That one's easy. It's going to go into that mixed organics cart. Nope. Well, you, I mean, if you had to, you could put it in the garbage, but why would you do that when we can turn that into compost? Food scraps. Yep, you got that one. It's offered if you live in one of these cities. Put it right into there and it will get turned into beautiful compost. Dog poop, cat litter. Yeah, yeah. Do you do this to your dog? Do you have a little bag that catches it there? Um, my predecessor found this. He just, he just loved this picture. Uh, yeah, that's going to be garbage, right? Including that kitty litter there, it's also going to be garbage. And uh, yeah, you can get that little bag uh, that you put on your dog there for nineteen ninety nine. Other stuff, garbage. <laughs> this is one. It's like kind of like who's buried in Grant's tomb. Um, yeah, uh, garbage goes in the garbage. But you know, it's amazing that we get those those uh, material recovery facilities have a sometimes as high as ten, even at one point fifteen percent of the stuff that's coming in to get recycled is actually garbage. That um, their profit margin on that. To, to, to survive and gardens a nonprofit uh, is razor thin. And so if people start putting in the garbage that costs them a lot of money. Uh, paint, where does paint go? House paint can go into the special recycling bin. So it will, you can put any of those items that are there, you know, primers, stains, sealers, all those kind of things down there. That's a pretty cool feature. Uh, antifreeze, where does it go? Down the storm drain? No, it's going to go in there. Just put it back in the original container if you still change your antifreeze yourself. Uh, motor oil, you change your own oil, uh, where are you going to put it? Uh, yeah, you guessed that, correct. So they will take that, separate it out, and that motor oil can be recycled. What about these things? You got chains, ropes, Christmas lights. Christmas lights and garden hose. That could probably be recycled, right? Huh? Huh? No, it can't. That's all garbage. This is the kind of stuff that's a nightmare uh, to those material recovery facilities, just like those plastic bags. It gets all tangled up. And man, it does, it's, those things are real, especially those metal chains like that, are really tear up a lot of equipment. Clothing. What are we going to do about clothing? It's, you know, you know what you can do with clothing. You can always take it to like the Goodwill, right? But can't you put it in mixed recycling? Nope. It's just gonna be garbage. But if you can find a um, thrift store that can take it, that's where you wanna take it. And even if it's torn or un unwearable, if you take it to Goodwill, they have a special program where they deal with just fabric. So um, 
you can do that, but make sure that if you're going to donate it to a thrift shop, make sure that it's, you know, in reasonably good shape for them so that, you know, somebody would want to buy it. Electronics. What do we do with electronics? Can we, you know, obviously you can take a phone and it's still working. What about that? Put it in its recycling? Nope. It's not going to go in any of those containers. Um, except for, I guess you could put it into the garbage. But uh, if you take it up to the transfer stations, either the North Marion, the uh, Salem Kaiser North Marion, they have places where they'll accept those uh, items and they'll recycle them, uh, make sure that gets recycled and does not in garbage. And because uh, those things have some very valuable components, everything from, from rare metals to gold to, yeah, all that stuff. Um, what about these weird things? Remember, I don't know if anybody's got, still got VHS tapes, but People still have CDs and, and all these other weird things. Where can you do with those? You remember those little, those little floppy disks? Yeah, so where's that gonna go? That can also go to the transfer stations for free. Uh, and you can also take it to garden services. Hazardous waste, what do we do with our hazardous waste? Put it in special recycling? Yes, yes, no, no. Well, you're not going to put any in those containers, but you can take it to the hazardous household hazardous waste facility, which is that is located at the, the Salem Kaiser transfer station out on just off just outside of Salem, east of Salem on Highway 22. And this doesn't cost anything to bring that stuff if you're a resident. And it doesn't matter where you live. You could live in any place in Oregon and go there and drop it off. They're just going to ask you your um, zip code and uh, it's, it's totally free to you. Now, if you're a business, you have to register and take your stuff there because there is a fee for businesses. This is a very expensive program for Marion County, so this is where some of the tipping fees that we get go to cover those costs because it is it costs a lot to deal with these items. And again, we've got a lot of electronics. There's a lot of hazardous materials in these, but also very valuable materials in these. So we need to find a home for them. So where is it going to go? Well, not over there, but again, if it's electronics, you can take it to the same kind of transfer station. Um, our garden service, you can give them a call. They'll take it. Uh, if you go to, if you've got a bunch of stuff, you probably want to, uh, to check to see if they'll take it. If you're especially going to go to garden um, and, and really anything that's got a plug, uh, that means it's going to have something that'll drive it. There's going to be valuable components. We want to get those things and make sure that they're handled responsibly and they get uh, recycled. Um, if, you, if it goes to someplace like Garten, they're going to check them. If, they, if it can be easily repurposed, they're going to take it and, and turn around and, and sell it, um, you know, take it out, and pull out the memory piece of it, change it up, and put it back out on the market. So it's, nothing's better than uh, reusing an item, especially something that is, is uh, took so many resources to create as those electronic devices. What about bulbs? Got some fluorescent bulbs in there and whatnot. What can we do with these things? Some of you should know the answers to this. Fluorescent lights. Um, fluorescent lights can have a small amount of mercury in them. You can take them to the same kind of transfer station. Um, they'll, they'll take up to 10 a day. Um, most people are moving away from from the fluorescent lights, more moving more towards LEDs. Um, and we'll get to that in just a second, but you can take these for free if you're a resident. Um, and if you are a business and you want to find out where you can take these items, then you can give us a call at uh, Marion County and just talk to, talk to us and we'll help you get there, figure that out. You can also take LED lights um, there. They don't have mercury in them, but they have little computer-like chips in them which are very valuable. So they wanna, they wanna pull those, those, those uh, rare earth metals out of there, valuable metals to uh, reuse them. Syringes, syringes, can you put those in the garbage? Can you put them in mixed recycling? No, you can't put them in mixed recycling. Those can't put them in any of those items over there. If you've got syringes, you need to talk to your garbage hauler and, uh, and then they will tell you what to do with them. Corks, what can we do with corks? Think about it. Special items, right? It's gonna be garbage, but if you do have a natural cork, 
There are a few places you can take that again out to the Salem Kaiser Transfer Station. And uh, Roth's usually has a bin over by their wine section where they'll accept natural cork. Be careful, there's a lot of that, pla that uh, plastic cork that looks a lot like it. What about uh, container still with medicine in it? Okay, so what are we gonna do with our old medicine? We're gonna put it into recycle bin, of course not. So let's think about that. It can go into the garbage um but whatever you do don't flush it down the toilet because this stuff has got a lot of chemicals that are going to it's you know it's the chemicals are going to end up going down into our streams and rivers which ultimately is the willamette river we don't want that in there so um you can put it in your garbage you can basically just ideally just put it inside of a bag so it's covered up uh, again odds are great that those those containers are going to end up getting burned at the uh, covanta waste uh, energy facility if you think that somebody's going to get into it, just mix it in with, you know, cat litter. Maybe nobody gonna mess with it after that. Glasses. What are we going to do with glasses? Well, we used to have a uh, place where at the transfer station, but uh, it's, we don't have that anymore at the, uh, either the transfer station. So if you've got that, you can contact uh, your, your sometimes the local optimist, uh, optometrist. Optimus, if they're an optimistic uh, optometrist, they will take it probably. And if not, there's a, you can check with the Lions Club. Um, otherwise, it's just going to be garbage. But you know, it's good to try to find a repurpose for these places. Maybe even sometimes the thrift shops might take them. Uh, hearing aids are also going to be garbage unless you can find some place for them. Again, Lions Club might know where those could go, so you can check with them. Uh, compostable or degradable bags. So anything, um, these are the compostable cutlery, plates, glasses, garbage bags that you've got. And so now you want to compost them. So you want to put them in that mixed organics bin, right? Right, that's what you want to do? Well, I hate to tell you this, but you just spent a lot of money on a product that is not accepted. Why is that? Well. All of the composting facilities of the state of Oregon said, look, we can't accept these things. We operate our composting facilities to basically turn your food scraps and your yard debris into beautiful compost in about 60 days or so. And so if you put these materials in there, we can't tell them from the real deal are fake. So there's, cause there's a lot of bad organics out there or materials they say that they're compostable um, so we they won't accept them and also a lot of those things won't break down in that 60 day period and so all of a sudden they've gone through this whole process they use a lot of time and energy blood sweat and tears to make that compost and you've got these little plastic shards that somebody thought would well they would compost well they might compost in a year but that doesn't work right so we want our just like we want our recycling system to work, we want our composting facilities to work as well. So don't use them, they're just garbage. I would say this, don't buy them. Don't buy them, don't buy them, okay? They just won't work under our systems. And buying them is not necessarily, even if they're gonna break down, the impacts on greenhouse gas emissions, DEQ has been looking at that in generally, not with every single one, but generally for most of those products, they have a much higher carbon footprint than using the non, quote, compostable or biodegradable products, end quote. Did I preaching up on that one? Okay. Toner cartridges, inkjets, there's information about that. You can take them up to the Salem Kaiser and North Grand Transfer Stations, both of them, for free. Toner tubes are not. Okay, so they're an out, they're just garbage. But you could try to see if you're, wherever you bought it will accept what you've got. Um, and a lot of uh, product producers will have mail-in programs, so HP and some of those guys. So we've gone through all these things. That's a lot of stuff, you guys. And I hope everybody's batting a thousand, right? That means that you didn't get anything wrong. Um, trust me, it's, that was a hard test. Um, but I want you to take away these three things. Um, when you're not sure, 
about what it is that you've got. Don't just think, well, they'll sort it out. No, don't do it. If you're just not sure and you can't find out, it just goes as garbage, okay? Um, don't be wishful. The other one is reducing how much stuff you use and reusing what you have is better for the environment than recycling. So that's a huge takeaway there because if you don't buy it and you can't, if you get something and you can't reuse it, you can only recycle it, it's, it's so much better just not to ever have to recycle something. You just want to use what you got. And another thing, because we get worked up about packaging, but the environmental impact of what you're purchasing matters more than the package that it came in. Okay, it's really that thing. So a lot of people get worked up about that. Let's imagine you just bought a new t-shirt and the environmental impacts of the bag that maybe they put that t-shirt in or maybe the plastic wrap that they cover the t-shirt in, you get worked up like, why is there all this plastic? Well, there's that, but I'm telling you what right now, that t-shirt has a much greater environmental impact than any of that pa packaging did. So you need to think about what's in the bag more than the package. Okay, so all those things are important to think about when you are a consumer, which we all are. So what we want to do then is we want to think about, we want to recycle right, as this young man is doing. And I mentioned that we have a recycle guide. This is where you want to um, go to, if you're, if, you, if you're questioning whether something can or cannot be recycled, I want you to go to mcrecycleguide.net. I would suggest that you get that link and you put that on your, put a little uh, icon on your, your computer screen so that you can um, find out what, what can and what can't. It's very handy to use. And I've been talking a long time. So at this point, what we're gonna do is I'm gonna get Miss Jessica to help me and we're gonna answer some of your questions. Let's see, you there, Jess? Yes, yes. and people have really enjoyed this, Alan, um, saying that they really enjoyed all the information and that it's really eye-opening since you've gone into such great detail. Um, one okay. question we have is about painted wood. And if you're not sure if the wood is painted with um, lead paint or not, what do you do with that? Where can you take that? That's a great question. So painted wood cannot go into the uh, mixed organic cart. Okay, so you wouldn't want to put that in your debris cart. If it's wood that has not been painted or treated, it can go into that mixed recycling cart. If it's got a bunch of nails on it, mm, no. Um, you just don't, don't put any painted wood in there. That's going to be garbage, unfortunately. Um, also, you want to make sure that you've got, there's, there are treated boards. Imagine, think about uh, the posts that possibly, you know, you use for fencing. You know, those are, those are treated boards. Again, you don't want to put those in. Some of the older ones have, you know, an arsenic treatment to it. You don't want to put those in there as well. So again, just raw wood can go into your organics cart. Perfect. And, and Tracy had a question, Tracy Marsh. Can you clarify if the big Tide Pod containers are recyclable? I asked her if she had one that she could share. Um, it sounds like she doesn't, but I'm not sure what it looks like. Like, does it look like a bottle? Does it look like a tub? Does it look like, you know, um, do you know what we're talking about, Alan? The big Tide Pod containers. A big, oh, the Tide Pod containers? I don't know what one looks yeah. like. Yeah, those are, those look more like buckets. Um, and again, when we talk about those containers like that, it's got to be, it's got to be a bottle or a jug. And, and, and just that, that shape alone of those, those pod containers, um, because it's bucket-like, um, a lot of times those MRF facilities can't handle those uh, shapes. So um, if you're worried about the recycling, again, uh, think about the, uh, the, the impact of what's in it versus the recyclability. If that's a better deal, if it's a better purchase, then go with it. But it's going to be garbage. Um, and then how about the large liquid laundry? Like the, it kind of looks like a jug. 
the big kind. Uh huh. Can you talk about that? Yeah. So they definitely look like jugs, and since it looks like a jug, it is a jug. So just make sure that it's you know clean and dry. And take nope. off the lids. And all no, no lids. Yes. Perfect. Um, can you share what nurseries in Salem take plastic pots? The okay. So for sure, I know that um, the uh, Terra Gardens will, and I know that the 13th Street um, Nursery will. Are they doing it now in COVID though? Do you know? Because I know they did before. So I think, and I think this is true. Like we had the question about UPS and packaging materials. Call them ahead of time. COVID has really changed how people are reusing things. So just be kind and call that business ahead of time is what I would recommend. That's a great, uh, great warning there, piece, Jessica. Thank okay. you. Perfect. Um, egg cartons. We kind of talked about this already. Can they go in the organics if they don't have stickers? Can you just give a quick refresher? Um, no, it's okay. going to be garbage. garbage. They don't want them in there. Um, Ryan Zink from the city of Salem asked, can you talk about yard debris that doesn't go in the mixed organics cart, such as dirt, rocks, and sod? Okay, um, great question. Uh, dirt, rocks, and sod, we'll, there's nothing there that's going to break down, right? So those materials there um, are not gonna be composted. So we, they definitely don't want rocks. Um, that's, uh, that's, that's a no-no, um, and neither is soil of any kind. So I don't know if it was just a trick to get me to say soil or not, but um, <laughs> but uh, no, those items do not go in there. Perfect. Yeah. Yvonne has a question about um, if there's paper that's too small to be recycled. What's your kind of guide with that? Um, we, it's funny because we talked about this some years ago, trying to figure out what is it. So um, if if it's if it's as big as I, I think the rule of thumb was is it's small if it's bigger than your hand. Okay, if it's your bigger than your hand, it's fine. Now, some people have really small hands. So let your conscience be your guide. How about that? Um, let's see. Microwave ovens. How about like those weird electronics? The okay. TV sets, things like that. Yeah. So a lot of times, especially if they're working, a lot of thrift shops will take those if they're working. Um, Television sets can go to, well, there's a lot of places that will take TV sets, but weird electronics, again, if it's got a plug, you can take it to the Salem Kaiser Transfer Station and uh, or the North Marion Transfer Station and they will accept it. Perfect. And speaking of plugs, um, Jamie from the Mid Valley um, Haulers Association wrote about their Haulers Mid Valley curbside collection app that you can get on your phone or Android. Um, and that's really helpful to tell you when um, your recycling days are, reminder about your garbage, but then also what can be put in. So um, once again, that's called the Haulers Mid Valley Curbside Collection app. And Alan, I don't know if we could just, like put a link later. Um, yeah, we can certainly do that. Uh, that's a great link. Thank you, Jamie, for that. And we will, when we send out the information to when we post this particular webinar, we'll include that information in that email. Perfect. And then um, James had a question and he knows it's already been asked. Um, I think he just missed it. Why can we recy recycle junk mail, but not frozen food boxes? Yeah. Again, it's the frozen food boxes have that plastic liner that's invisible, but it keeps it from being uh, pulped properly on the uh, pulp mills here on the West Coast and the uh, envelopes don't. And they've just, they've just made a deal with the devil. They realized they wouldn't get very many envelopes that were clean if they they rejected them because of that little bit of plastic that's on there. But uh, yeah, that's that's the reason. And then um, will the chat Q&As be available on the recording, Alan? Um, yes, they will be because I'll stop it. Uh, I'll stop recording, but I'll keep answering questions till about uh, noon. Right. But then will the Q&As show up on the recording if, if People miss the Q and A chat box. Can we try to capture that piece to it? You want to answer that, Jessica? 
I, I think we'll try. I can't promise that we can figure it out, but we'll try. <laughs> yeah. yeah, okay. All right. Um, let me, sorry, I'm still looking. How can you stop? That's all right. oh, how can we get people to stop mailing us all that junk mail? Do you have any tips? Um, well, there is a website. We used to we used to really promote this, but uh, the junk mail has dropped so dramatically. Um, gosh, I'm trying to remember the name of it. If you go to mcrecycles.net, though, I think just type in in that Google search junk bar mail. junk mail. And you should get that information there. Thank you. You're absolutely, I, I'm pretty I sure you're right. I think that might just be the easiest way because yeah. off the top of my head, Alan, I can't remember it either. Yeah. Um, can you recycle or um, get rid of the blades at the top of your um, box cutter? The blades on the top of your box cutter. Yeah. Or um, so you mean you, those spent blades then? Yeah. Um, those are, those would be a metal and you would, but because they're so sharp, please don't put those in, in, uh, in e, e, I wouldn't even put those in a container that's crimped. They're just so sharp, it could, it could hurt. Some of the workers at Garden are up at Pioneer. I would just go ahead and put those in the garbage and let uh, the uh, giant magnets of Covana suck those up. Perfect. Yeah. Um, and then how about tires? Tires. Okay, so tires are another, um, there's a, a lot of information about tires on our recycle guide, and I would, I'm going to direct people to that because it depends on whether it's got a rim on it or the size of the tire and that kind of information. Um, but they do get recycled, but it, there's a cost to that. So those are not free. You can't put them in your, your local garbage. So they, and they can't go into, even if you've got a, uh, a, a, like a giant uh, Dropbox at your at your apartment building, they can't go in there. Not tires. Perfect. Thank you. Yep. And then um, Hitler, <clears throat> excuse me, Hillary wanted to mention uh, that you might be able to take your plastic pots before they did pre-COVID um, to the Master Gardeners area. Um, Alan, uh, do you want to just briefly, but during COVID, you might want to give them a call ahead of time. But Alan, do you also want to talk a little bit about that composting section that's over there too? Yeah, if you if you guys know where that uh, Fresh Start Market is, uh, right between the Fresh Start Market at 3020 Center Street and just to the east of there is the health department. Um, right behind the health department, there is a the the uh, OSU Master Garden uh, Master Gardener organization has a demo garden back there. And it's way cool. They've got, they grow all sorts of stuff back there. And they also do an enormous amount of composting back there. And they have a composting demonstration site that they've started up. And, and it looks pretty cool. So if you get a chance to go over that way and take a look at it, I think you'll, you'll find it interesting. Perfect. Thank you. And then how about, I, I know you went quickly through this, um, Christmas lights. Christmas lights are a no-go. Uh, if they still work, um, Give them to the, uh, the hippies down to the end of the street. Uh, they always like them. Oh, wait a second, that's me. Um, but yeah, so if, you, if they can't be reused by somebody and you can't give them to a thrift shop because they're broken, then just put them in the garbage. But remember, again, if you put them in the recycle bin, it tears up equipment at the material recovery facility. Um, somebody had a question about soiled aluminum foil. Could it be folded up or wadded up and put into small cans for recycling? Yes, if you crimp the can. Play crimp the can, it's a fun game. And even though it's soiled, it should be fine? Yep. Perfect. Yep. Because remember, it's gonna be it's gonna be melted at about three thousand degrees. Um, yeah. some techies have been helpful and said you can copy and paste the chat into a Word document is an option. And then also there's a way to click on the upper right. There's ellipses that you can click on and save it. Um, if people are wanting to do that. But we'll try to connect it to, to the Zoom recording. Um, what else? Tires, I think we just answered. Okay, can you just talk about compostables a little bit more? Um, somebody mentioned that food cart owners have been buying compostable in, in good faith. Could you get the word out to them about compostables have a higher carbon footprint? Um, just general compostable stuff, Alan. Yeah. 
Yeah, it's, uh, you know, I would, um, it's, it's such an interesting topic, but um, just, to, just in a nutshell, they, the, the, the composting facilities in Oregon don't want them. They've, they've tried them, they've used all these different compostable products, biodegradable products, whatever they claim them to be. Um, and there are really good products out there and there's really bad products out there, but it's very hard for these facilities to know the difference, right? Because they're, they're dealing with literally thousands of pounds of this material coming in every single day. So they can't possibly sort through there and try to look at it and go, well, I think this is from Jojo Mama's uh, organics farm, you know, down in Tennessee. Uh, there's no way. So they, they just re reject it because even, even if it is a product that does compost or break down in, um, at some point, none of them will do it in 60 days, not in the time frame that they need it to happen. So if these people were using it, if you were going to buy it and use it only on your own property, you know, maybe in your own composting system, that's one thing. Go ahead and do that. But the reality is, on a commercial scale, they're, they're a no-go. They just don't work. And so people spend, a, they, they do buy these things in good faith, and they think they're doing the right thing. And unfortunately, they're, it's, it's, they're living the lie, so to speak. And, and um, it, they just there's just not a, a place to use them really on in, in Oregon and my, and I would go so far as to say the entire West coast because all the commercial facilities on the West coast from California all the way up into British Columbia, they're all composting as fast as we are here in Oregon. So they're just not going to want this stuff. It's unfortunate, but that's the way it is. Um, and then about uh, plastic bags. So a lot of people are saying a lot of those stores have just removed that plastic bag recycling um, from the stores. But Yvonne said that Winco and Safeway on South Commercial are both accepting plastic bags. Um, and she just went to Safeways yesterday. So uh, you can check with your local grocer. They can suspend that at any given time um, due to the plastic industry. So it's just something you have to keep your um, eyes on. Yeah, and, and also I was just in Roths uh, last week and they have a bin as by the checkout um, they, they, um, that you can put in your plastic bags there. So you, you'll see that on the exit as opposed to the entrance. Mm -hmm. Perfect. So, Thank you. Yeah. How about anything um, like especially chocolate bars, my favorite thing in the world. Um, if they have uh, metallic gold on the paper, what can that, can you do anything with that or is it garbage? Uh, if there's metallic gold on the paper, the, but the, in the paper itself is, doesn't have any food on it, you can just throw it into your, uh, you know, it's not, it's, it's, it, it could go into your recycling bin. Um, I don't think that's going to have the plastic coating on it. Yeah. I. For me, anything that has metallic on it, if it's paper, so metallic or glitter, that gets trashed. Oh, thank so you, like Justin. Right. Like wrapping paper, but Alan's right. If it's just like metallic, um, like aluminum foil, then yeah, make sure it's clean and then you can recycle that. Good call. Uh, and then people have really great tips too. So once again, the reduce, reuse, recycle mantra of like, try to reuse before you recycle. So people are saying you can use the plastic bags um, to scoop out kitter, litter, uh, kitty litter boxes, um, you know, or dogs, waste, um, using aluminum foil to clean your barbecue. I think that's a really good tip too. Um, and you can still take in your plastic bags at the, at the grocery stores to, you know, if, if it's a place where you're, you know, I go into uh, life source and I buy stuff and when I go in, I always pick a reusable bag that I can put my stuff into, right? I can buy my, put my groceries in there and take it out. And um, that, you, you even get credit for it. So, hey, that's a bonus. Um, so there's, there's these other uses, any way you can find to extend that life of that product, that's a bonus. Great. And then how about unused cooking oil, Alan? Unused cooking oil, that's a great question. So if you've got cooking oil, and uh, used or unused, once it's spent, if you put it into a container, uh, 
uh, probably possibly the original container if possible, you can put that out into your, your special recycling bin and they will accept that and take it back and it gets turned into biodiesel over at the sequential biofuels off on uh, off Turner Road there, Cooper Road. So, Great. yeah. Um, and then how about your experience with TerraCycle? Uh, wondering if anybody's used TerraCycle. Um, I'm going to be diplomatic and just say we have experience with TerraCycle. I'm going to leave it at that. You can read between the lines. Um, Kate Taylor, um, an awesome recycler that we know from the industry, also said uh, they don't add value to the compost and uh, just has, you know, potential pesticide use and whatever. So they're not great options. Try to stay away from them. Um, thicker plastic bags is a question. Um, are they com compostable or recyclable? Do we just throw them away or return them to the store? Well, if you've got a bag and it meets that description, in fact, uh, we just got this great uh, video from one of our master recyclers who does a demonstration of what what are the properties of a plastic bag have uh, that would be ideal for uh, whether it can be recycled or not. In fact, I think we'll just, why don't we just attach that link? Good idea. That. So we'll send that out so folks can look at that. I think you'll find that helpful. Mm -hmm. And so if you're a mass recycler out there, and I see a lot of you who are, I want you to watch this. And I want you to think about what video could I make? And I'm, I'm putting this into your head. You're, you're going to say this, like Cindy O'Neill sitting there, and she's going to go, what could I make a video about that would be helpful for the recycling waste reduction world? So when you see it, I think you're, you'll enjoy it. Thank you, Cindy, for letting me use your name. Um, can like a cat litter container be recycled if rinsed out? I think this is kind of like the bucket thing. Alan? Can a cat litter container be recycled if rinsed out? Well, if it's, yeah, a lot of those containers look like a bottle, right? Or a jug. So if it fits that description, yes. So but again, just always yeah. look at it and says, is it a bottle? Is it a jug? When it's a, when it's a rigid plastic, if it's not one of those two things, it's a no, no. So, All right, how about the boxes aluminum foil or plastic wrap comes in? Those, the boxes, the, those things come in. We well, you know they have, it's, it's interesting because it's, it's paper, but it also has that metal strip on it. So I suppose if you pull, you know what I'm talking about? It's got that little uh, strip that you, you like the most dangerous thing in, in your kitchen. Oh, yes. I don't know how many times <laughs> I've cut myself with that stuff. I don't even buy that stuff anymore. It's, I, I, I'm tired of being wounded. Um, so, uh, yeah. So if you, if you pull that metal band off of there, then um, you could recycle it, I suppose. Um, I would say it's not worth uh, your fingers, but anyway. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, let's see what else. How about the large feed bags that have like netting with them? Um, can you recycle those? No, okay. those are, those are no, no. Um, you can try to upcycle them, but yeah, no, there's not any great places. Uh, and then somebody asked about our survey about the disposable versus reusables and what people want to, um, what they feel comfortable using during COVID. So we had this, this, uh, survey that went out to people uh -huh. and we did have a really good response. So that's what Judy's asking is, how many responses did you get? We didn't get so many yet from the restaurants. Um, and there's news coming up about a grant possibly for restaurants. Um, so keep an eye out for that. Uh, but then from the consumer side, we got like just under 400 uh, responses about that survey. So it's really eye opening to go through those and, and understand what the barriers are for people to reuse things. Because I think we've gotten some knowledge that like, certain businesses have tried to stay away from letting you bring in a reusable cup to refill. So how, how do we negotiate that and figure that out? And we've had an intern during this time 
and she's been really helpful. Alan, can you talk about a little bit about the intern and what she's been doing? Yeah, I've been trying to trying to come up with a, a way to um, make sure that we don't you know, one of the things we've, we've really been turning the page on the uh, plastic industry by, you know, um, banning bags, um, banning, you know, working on getting rid of uh, disposables uh, in so many ways, like straws and these kind of things. And it's this COVID thing has really been a boon for the plastic industries because they've been, you know, pushing this mantra that, uh, you know, that it's the only safe way, the only safe option. So, people going into a store like may or, or say a restaurant and now they've got to, you know, they can't take their own doggy bag back, you know, and to get their, their materials, you know, food, uh, take away. They have to take the, the throwing, the disposable one from the, the restaurant, or maybe, you know, they, you know, we can't take in items like a cup of, you know, a cup of coffee. Um, why can't I get my cup? You know, why can't we use my cup again? So these, these are the kind of things that um, the, uh, the studies have shown that these things can still be safely used if they're done properly, um, but it's just, it's, it's that awareness piece. And so we're trying to, you know, fight back against this, you know, march backwards against, uh, the, you know, with the, with the disposable products because we were really making headway and we need, to re we need to reclaim our ground because these things, you know, it, it's, Touching items is such a low form of uh, conveyance of COVID, and the fact that these things can be handled anyway properly, uh, it just seems like a no-brainer that we could want to fight to get this back. So, I'm hoping that we win, but that's uh, that depends on all of us. Um, a lot of people are helping each other out on this chat, which is awesome. So, somebody asked about running shoes. And then somebody recommended that Gallagher's is taking used sneakers, which is awesome. Alan, do you know anybody else that's taking used sneakers? I don't. Um, they've always been kind of the leader in the area about that. So if they're, you know, you know, again, if, if a pair of sneakers is still wearable, you know, there's a lot of thrift shops that will take them. But uh, my guess is that people wear them. If you've got a good pair of comfortable sneakers, sneakers you're going to wear them if they're dead. Yes. Um, and then somebody also said that Wilco takes the feed bags back to recycle, which I didn't know that. So that's pretty cool if they are doing that. Um, cause usually that doesn't fall in the plastic film recycling typically. So, uh, that might be good for one of us to follow up on. Yeah. Um, I've not, yeah. Go ahead. Yeah. No, go ahead. No, I, I haven't heard that in a long time. So I might, I can't imagine where, where they're taking those, but oh well, if they take them, they take them. Yeah. And then um, do new grocery bags that last for over a hundred uses have a bigger impact like other compostable things like forks and cups, asks Gloria. So do new grocery bags that last for over a hundred uses have a bigger impact like other compostable things like forks and cups? So. If you've got something that can be used more than once, and it is, that has a great impact. That's going to be better than something that's going to be used once, whether it's compostable or not. If everything else is equal. Yep. And then some people are saying, too, that Roths will let you reuse your own bags or use your own bags, which is great. Yes. Yes, yeah, they will. Yep. I think that's pretty much it for the questions. Let me know if there's any more. Lynn said that um, Wilco has a, just a bin right out in the front that you can take your um, feed bags, which is great. Yeah. Okay. Well, I'd like to thank everybody for attending today. And again, we're going to put this up on the, the World Wide Web for you to go see. <laughs> thank you, Ingrid. And uh, it's been great hearing, you know, having you guys all here today. And thank you for showing up and caring so much. And again, you know, recycling is, um, it's just one of the three R's. It's an important one. We want to do it right. And there are so many caveats, as you've seen, there's always, you know, exceptions to every rule. And that's, you know, 
Jessica and I and Rachel, we do this professionally and even we get stumped all the time because there's so much to remember and there's so many nuances and things come and go. And that's why Terry, who has been in this business for longer than most of us have been alive, um, he, uh, he's, he's sitting in today because, you know, it's still, he's, we all scratch our head going, what's going on? So I thank you all and I'm glad to see you again, Terry. And uh, thank you for your help, Jessica. And with that, I'm going to stop this recording. And yeah. Thank you so much, Alan. Everybody's really enjoying.